Chicken legs. Oh, we're working. Uh, I was working out with the kid today, man. That was that was uh, that was really cool. I always wanted to be like that. We woke up and I said, "Kid, we're going to the park. We're gonna work out." And he didn't complain. He did a good job, man. Uh, that was really fun, man. Let's take a looky looky. From hostile deserts to lonely islands and the highest mountains, wherever there is space to expand into, humans do so. So it's hardly surprising that we're already making preparations to set foot on Mars and to create the first permanent... First thing I want to say is, and I think you don't want to hear that, I think we're not going to see us on Mars in our lifetime. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe one day when I'm an old man... Maybe I'm really, really wrong, but I don't know if we're going to see humans on Mars and if it's going to be suicidal. It's way too loud. Sorry, sorry. I don't know about that. And I, 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 I a long time ago, I read articles about this where people are saying, why are we trying to go to Mars? You have to understand that the space race that's right now not happening anymore between nations, but between billionaires, is an ego thing. It's it's Elon Musk wants to go to Mars because it's his goal. It's his life goal. It's also a big achievement for him and his company and etc. But wouldn't it be more intelligent to fix Earth's problems first before colonizing a new planet? If the human race learns nothing and destroys the first planet, who says we're not going to do the same to the second planet? Why not invest all your billions, Mr. Jeff Bezos and Mr. Elon Musk, to fix this planet and our technology here, other than trying to leave the planet. Um, a, thing to fuck, a thing to think about, I will say. I don't know. Colony outside of Earth may Is this a good sound for you guys? Another planet and turn it into a second blue home. Already fucked anyway? But wait, yes, since before today we, we can get to the nice future stuff, we first have to complete the Why second both? phase of colonization. Creating a semi-permanent outpost to prepare the ground Fire. for a larger human presence. But doing so will be gruesome. A start on Mars is a fresh start. You already know the problems that will arise. Even for an expansionist species like us, Mars... The thing is, I think you have to understand this, and we live on a planet that is run on one true God, and that is money. Going to new planets, fixing our problems, every big issue the world has is mostly fixed with money. Uh, or investments, etc. And all this money that you're you're spending going to Mars could maybe be invested in, in stuff that could save this planet. Today I read a thing. Uh, I was on Twitter, like I just showed you guys. Today I saw on Twitter. Today the International Climate Change Council has determined that we're more fucked than we thought. Uh, the planet will be heated up 1.5 uh, degrees more by 2030, and a lot of effects of climate change are already irreversible. I then checked the comment section, and the, the comment section, obviously... Hey, everybody has their opinion. Just want to share this. In the comments, there was this woman. You know, white woman in her 40s, blonde hair. She loves America, right? She's married. And she says, uh, Maybe we all just have to pray that soon a technology will be found that fixes our problems. Many people, they, 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 they look maybe for an easy way out. Oh, technology is going to save us. Some technology is going to save us. What if it doesn't? Why do you push everything away from you? You're putting all the fucking guilt away from you. Oh, they're just going to, they're going to fix the technology, man. And yes, I get that. Climate change and our problems could be probably fixed with technology, technological advances. But two things, you have to fund it with money, which as you see every day, nobody has. Even the rich countries don't have fucking money. And secondly, technological advance takes years. It, it seems to me that climate change is quicker than our technological advance. This is extreme. At first glance, Mars seems familiar. Polar ice yeah, caps, the larger like valleys, yes. liquid water under its surface, and a day barely longer than Earth's. The ideal place for us to go. Unfortunately, Mars is actually a cold, radioactive desert where the ground is poisonous and breathing is impossible. The real Mars problem is, is awful. To wear pants you almost certainly house. don't want to go there. The pioneers doing the hard work on Mars. Isn't there a game by Paradox where you go to Mars and try to survive? Right? Surviving Mars? Mars will have an intensely so, yeah. stressful life filled with incredibly challenging problems never encountered before. But there are plenty of people willing to do that work. 
And when I think about space travel, uh, once again, I'm sorry for these parallels, but dude, I lost so many viewers. People really wanted to see Fallout tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, in in Warhammer, there's a certain type of travel, and they realize, which I believe, as an amateur who doesn't know anything, believe to be the same in our reality. No matter what the level of technology we achieve, ever hardcore distant travel in space will always take really long times if it is true that the theory of einstein is real that the speed of light is the fastest speed meaning that once you reach 300,000 kilometers per second your mass becomes infinite you break the laws of physics you can't and even if you travel with the speed of light you need forever to reach anything in the universe it comes apparent that the biggest issue of any race in the universe is travel no matter how far you go and don't come at me with your fucking stargate wormholes that are not even confirmed yet or anything by real legit science that they work for travel um everybody says i brought a new camera it is crazy how you think i have a new camera because i zoomed in it's massive and in and i think it makes so much sense in warhammer what they do is they make certain spaceships that are literal little mini moons the space like a death star they have their own gravity they have their own cell filter systems they have their own uh wow, vegetational uh really systems thank you so nice. much Belgian butcher for the five man and what they do is they realize and the human ego doesn't like to accept this they realize we're gonna send you astronauts on a trip out there but you will die on this trip and your only purpose is to make children so on this big spaceship that's its own little community you literally breed new humans because that's the only way to reach these long distances. If it takes 500 years to reach a certain exoplanet, you got to run like this. That's the two options. I think the, the next option is far more likely clip this so in 5,000 years they know I was right. I believe, I truly believe the only way to overcome the distances Whoa, of space, thank you for five men, is, nice. uh, is me me mechanicum, it's AI. Machines don't care about time. The computer doesn't think he's gonna die one day and if you send for example a cyborg or android or an ai uh, instead of an organic full human these guys have time they have the solar power they can sleep for 1000 years they don't care i think future space travel will be mostly done by ai machines or maybe some kind of immortal human being that merge with ai but i think the belief of humans organic like us are gonna travel a lot i think that's that's very naive and, and I think that's not so bright, man. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, uh, that was. And we my have thoughts. the technology to enable them to do it. For this video, we will assume there have been prior missions to Mars to scout out a good place for an outpost, store resources and equipment, and that there's already a moon base that serves as a hub. Freezing yourself doesn't work. I was watching a documentary about that once. You can't freeze humans. It doesn't work. You could make some hyperbolic sleep, which also after some years, you're just going to start dying. A certain very complex things will happen in your body that just can't be stopped. And especially freezing is very, very bad. Freezing literally kills people. You can't just freeze someone and wake them up again that that's not happening I, I once had it explained many years ago uh i remember i was watching futurama and then no i was googling it thank you Dobaron, man hey uh, lucky that you're out man because when you freeze yourself something happens in your cells and you just fucking die it destroys your cells for mars shit. missions the first major challenge for our outpost is the fact that mars is very energy poor because of its distance from the sun solar power is only 40 percent as effective as on earth but even this weakened sunlight is often it's obscured enough, right? for days by enormous dust storms. Oh. Solar they power alone solar will power probably Mars. not be enough. Alternatives such as wind power and geothermal energy are also unfeasible. I would think though by the time we actually travel to other planets, we have some kind of energy source like something nuclear or certain H2 cells or something, I guess. As there's hardly well, any yeah, atmosphere who, know, and right? Mars's interior monkey. is much too cold. Initially, nuclear technology might be the only option. Since Mars doesn't have easily accessible radioactive elements, the nuclear fuel needs to come from Earth along with the reactor. If we do set it up, it could power our small outpost for the first few years. Unfortunately, all that energy won't be very useful if we can't breathe. 
Mars's atmosphere is only 1% as dense as Earth's and mostly made up of CO2. So well, isn't Earth going to be full CO2 soon too? So are we getting used to it anyway? Oh, our We're habitats need to be pressurized and filled with an artificial atmosphere. Maybe aliens are looking at us and they think humans are putting so much CO2 out because they want to prepare for space travel or something. And that's why they're not they're coming. Made of nitrogen and Today oxygen, weird. I really didn't which comes with more don't, problems. Don't, don't Corners and flat walls are weak points, so the habitats will have rounded and smooth shapes to handle the stress of great pressure differences between the interior and exterior. The airlocks need to be very airtight and work perfectly every time. If you're born on Mars, you won't be able to go to Earth because the gravity will fuck you up. Dude, man. And we didn't even smoke weed yet. Ay, ay, ay. Without an extensive magnetosphere or a dense atmosphere, half of all radiation coming from space reaches the ground. A person on the surface... I mean, Elon Musk, uh, I think Elon Musk is always overrated. People act like he's a god. But um, for people in 5,000 years... Didn't he want to suggest to nuke uh, uh, Mars so it creates a, its own atmosphere? Wouldn't some kind of tactic be good to, before you go to Mars, you manipulate and terraform it in a way that you create an atmosphere or like plants or like, I, like I'm, I'm just an idiot, right? I don't know anything, but you, here we go. I am predicting the future right now. Here's my prediction. Like I'm dead serious. The human race will send AI robots to Mars because they're just more efficient, right? They don't fucking you die and shit, and they don't have to pee down. and stuff like that. How's the future gamer kid? And uh, how is the FIFA uh, with uh, the In a second, Laura. In a second. Um, thank you for the sub. We have to send. We we have to send certain. We have to we have to send. <laughs> we have to send certain uh, little mini buildings to Mars. Uh, that are being taken care of by um, by um, robots, and you put them there, and then you start creating these little ecosystems. You know, like um, you know these houses you go into, and they have plants in there, and then slowly these plants, you, you let a bit, a little bit of Cookie. the CO2 in. You let a little bit of the CO2 in, and then you let a little bit of the O2 out. Now I don't know physics, but if you would create O2 on Mars. Where will this O2 go, the particle? It will go into nothingness, first of all. But will it be lost? The question is, if you make enough O2 uh, superficial on Mars, will it at one point an atmosphere create, an ozone layer be made? Listen, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but this will probably be the way, right? It's creating an atmosphere something. Something like that. It will take millions of years. Elon Musk said something, if you really do it on a hardcore level, you can do that in like 1,000 years or 500 years. The sun blows it away. It will escape. But some kind in that way. I, I, obviously, I'm talking shit here, but... To me, it seems like the human race has to prepare a planet first before you can go there. I disbelieve of this, you go there and then you build a base and you just live there. It seems to make so much more sense to send AI over there that prepares it for us. This would, would be subjected to 50 times the radiation that they would be on Earth. Three years on the surface of Mars exceeds the radiation dose limits imposed on NASA astronauts for their entire career. This increases cancer risks significantly. To prevent that, we could shield our habitats with a thick layer of... Just send Twitch mods, man. They shield you from all the cancer. Am I right? Wink, wink. Frozen CO2 that can be harvested directly from the atmosphere. Covering the dry ice with a meter of dirt. Thing. Dude, to sorry for stopping again. I just want to share stories. I didn't stream all weekend. I had a massive lucid dream this weekend. You just talked about it. I had a big thing on stream last week where I talked about lucid dreaming. Dude, I had the ultimate lucid dream. It is such a trip. It's like you took drugs. You cannot imagine it. Dude, I'm fucking sleeping. And I'm walking around in like a village. I'm in a village. And suddenly, I'm myself. I'm lucid dreaming. Once again, if you know what that means, you are aware that you're dreaming inside a dream. And I'm literally, I know today's stream sounds like I'm smoking weed, but I'm not. I'm just really tired. And I'm inside this village and I'm like, and I'm walking around this village, man. And it was lucid dreaming is so fucking crazy. So fucking crazy. You have them every night. Jesus, man would further increase the level of protection. Sadly, this means almost no windows. From the inside, most living spaces will be windowless tunnels.
well it's probably very very important that the human race understands that when you go out there you have to be able to say goodbye to comfort you're not gonna have nice toilets you're not gonna have windows you're not gonna have a fucking iphone with 5g man from probably the outside have... they'll look like burial mounds all of this would still not hold back all the radiation but reduce it just enough to be survivable for long periods of time 29th of august mega command video release a spread it tommy chat i'm spreading spreading right in your face man that sounds fucking weird but um 29th of august the mega campaign ultra video releasing on youtube very big video i think it won't long or however more. protect I'm anyone sending you the who clips ventures tomorrow, outside but yeah makori you just you didn't i have someone sitting here the whole day and I so remote controlled robots will be used for routine work on the surface while our crew stays inside yeah well, staying like inside said, the, is a good idea for another really reason AI. AI Mars is... dust it's Everything, much finer man. than dust on Earth, so it could find its way into the gears or electronics of our machines. Because it's also very dry, it's electrostatically charged, sticking to everything, like spacesuits. It will be impossible to avoid carrying lots of Mars dust into our habitat and into the lungs of our crew. To make this e Isn't it crazy how many problems you have to face as a race if you want to reach this level? And I think each and every one of us has to be so humble and so thankful to real scientists, man. I mean, the saddest thing right now on Earth is that scientists are being looked upon as, as jokes, right? A scientist tells you global warming is real, COVID-19 is real, whatever. But 90% of the human race are like, ah, shut up. I'm driving my pickup and fuck your vaccine, motherfucker. And uh, man, we should all be very, very thankful for scientists. They have to overcome the biggest questions of all times. While you and me are just joking off to uh, hentai all day. Anyway, that's even going. worse. Mars's soil is filled with very toxic perchlorate salts. Constant exposure could be deadly. This problem can still be overcome, though. Spacesuits, for example, could be made in a way that they never truly enter the base, but stay attached to the outside of the habitats. Okay, great. Now we've safely isolated humans in terms of energy and air. And Why is he always showing humans as birds? And protected them from cancer, we just need to feed them. Water is easy to come by if a settlement is positioned near the Martian poles with their thick layers of ice. Growing food is a different kind of challenge, though. Mars's soils are alkaline. I genuinely didn't know you can easily get water on Mars, man. It makes sense, right? The frozen poles. So is that why Elon Musk wanted to nuke the poles? So something happens to the water there? And lack the vital nitrogen compounds that plants you, need to boy. grow. There's already poles there, they're looking for work. You need to use your shit for fertilizer. Bro. Before we can grow anything, we will have to decontaminate the soil, which is difficult and expensive. Let's go. Then the soil can be fertilized using recycled biological waste. All of this will take a lot of time and is very energy intensive. Mm. So we might use aquaponics to raise fish and plants together, making the astronauts' diets more varied and tasty. Dude, I'm, you're learning so much here, man. This is the future. Aquaponics. Aquaponics, man. Why do I feel like this is the future? And we're going to hear a lot of this. ...at the same time. This cool. will be an important psychological boost for our overworked crew. All of these things don't solve one fundamental problem, though. Mars has only 38% of Earth's surface gravity, which could cause muscle wasting, yeah. bone loss, and cardiovascular problems. So many problems. While this might be solved in the future by setting up rotating living spaces, for now, our crew has to live with low gravity and exercise a lot. Yeah, you have to create... I always read that. You have to create superficial gravity. And you do that with centrifugalkräfte centrifugal powers right when something when you go to the f the fair and you are in like one of these um machines that spins you very far right you feel a pull towards you that shit to is slow really the degradation down in the future the crew will probably have to everything. rotate every few years after being stuck indoors in tight spaces without windows yeah. with the same people performing the same machines day hard. in day out with little contact from the outside world and a lot to worry about yeah, the, the mental, it must be mentally so hard for you to handle this. Once again, another huge argument for AI and robots taking this over, right? Like Antarctic scientists or submarine staff, they will undergo intense psychological screening to make sure they're mentally resilient enough to handle this lifestyle for several years. 
Establishing the first real infrastructure on Mars will be extremely taxing work that only a group of very determined and competent people can do. So not us, Chet, not us. Luckily, we have enough of these on Earth. And there you have it, a small Mars base that will survive for at least a few decades. As long as it's getting a constant supply of resources, parts, nuclear fuel and crews from Earth. Unfortunately, Mars and Earth are separated by millions of kilometers and orbital periods that leave only a narrow travel window every two years. If there's an emergency in the colony, Earth wouldn't be able to help until the next travel window. I don't understand that. What? Why? Opens. Help. Why can't we? Ah, because they have. Ah, dude, that is that, that shit is so high IQ, man. Dude, I, I lost all my IQ because I'm a streamer. You have to use the, the, the swing of the... F ah. Helpers may arrive on a planet filled with corpses. Settling Mars will be the toughest challenge we have ever faced. It that will be gruesome so work to establish the infrastructure we need. But we're stubborn and we like extreme challenges. If we push through phase two of colonization, anything is possible. Cities illuminating the dark Martian night, a hub for travel between the planets, industries setting foot in orbit. I always feel like that's something that happens in Warhammer. As the human race will colonize other planets, these planets will slowly but surely create their own culture. They, at some point, people are born on Mars. They wouldn't feel Earth anymore. They never seen Earth. They're not connected to Earth. To the, they only know the Mars lifestyle and culture. And after hundreds and hundreds of years a lot of these planets are going to truly create their own culture lifestyle and even maybe i don't know human or something i think that's really really interesting man really interesting i'm not saying you guys already rebellion and stargate sg1 uh, MacGyver is going to kill everybody um but this is terraforming this is all... a true multi-planetary like imagine you and me teleport 2000 years in the future you will be so mind blown you future. will probably go crazy going to mars Martian is Hitler? hard but worth it and if we're lucky we might be around long enough to see it happening space, space, space. and cheer on the people who take on these I challenges for it, the man. benefit of us all i mean i have like 50 years left you guys have like figuring out 70. complex stuff is Most one of, of the best feelings ever especially if you don't have to do it all by yourself our friends from Brilliant can help you out with that part. Brilliant is a problem-solving website with a hands-on approach. Instead of just... Cool, man. That was a good video. That was a good video by Onzi Wilson. Wow.